Hey everyone, how are you all doing today? Now, one of the coolest looking Jedi of the prequels for me has got to be Plo Koon. He's also one of Dave Filoni's most favorite characters. The mask gives me some Vader vibes, and then whenever he showed up in the Clone Wars, I always wanted more of him. He was an awesome character that people may not know so much about beyond his iconic design. So. I thought I'd list some neat facts about the Jedi Master. Now, keep in mind these are just random facts, they're not literally the top 10, but they're just my top 10 for this video. So yours might be completely different, and if it is, please let me know down in the comments below. So, number one, who was Plo Koon? Well, he was a member of the Keldor race. Plo Koon was a Jedi Master on the High Council during the Clone Wars. As a High Jedi General, he took part in many campaigns throughout the Galactic Conflict, including the Battle of Abrigado and the Second Battle of Felucia. On the planet Cato Nemoidia, while leading a squadron of ARC-170 starfighters in a patrol flight, the clones under Plo's command received Order 66 and turn on the Jedi Master to blow him up in his fighter. Two, like the Skywalkers, Plo Koon came from a powerful Force lineage. The Force runs strong in the Keldor Jedi Master's family, as their members come from a centuries-long line of Force sensitives that have either been Barando, a Keldor Force sect, or they have been Jedi, like both his uncle and niece Shakun were. With Plo's outstanding fighting abilities, powerful telekinetic powers, and exceptional piloting skills, he was considered one of the most powerful Jedi in the history of the Order. Number three, he found Ahsoka. During a mission to the homeworld of the Togruta, the planet Shili, Plo discovered a Force-sensitive three-year-old girl named Ahsoka Tano. He soon brought her back to the Jedi Temple so she could be trained as a Jedi. She would of course go on to become Anakin Skywalker's Padawan, but through the years, Plo and Ahsoka kept in touch, keeping a close bond and friendship. Number four, he used the Jedi mind trick on 20 people. A mob of 20 sociology students from the University of Coruscant shouted cries of tyranny and oppression at the Jedi Temple as they entered the Order's public lobby and unleashed their pre-programmed graffiti bombs which sprayed messages such as Brood Snatchers, Baby Luddy Wants Her Mom, Justice, Peace, and Kidnappings. Then two younger Padawans attempted to contain them, but because they were afraid to injure the activists, the rowdy crowd pushed them aside and infiltrated the second atrium of the temple. But that's when Kiadi Mundi and Plo Koon arrived. Plo stood before the mob and shouted, Disperse immediately. You are likely to injure yourselves if you continue, and we do not want that to happen. In uniform, the crowd repeated his force command word for word and turned back. The Padawans then placed the students in hand binders for the judicial officials when they arrived with the transport speeder. It was only once they were loaded into the transport that his trance wore off them and the mob became agitated again. Number five, he used force lightning. That's right, Plo Koon for five days had been tracking a criminal named Dreed Pommel across the galaxy and finally located him on the planet Metellos. Dreed was hiding in the floating city of Ektra in a nice executive suite. Despite the Keldor's best effort to remain undetected as he entered Dreed's spacious suite, the criminal became aware of his approach and quickly clutched a female five-year-old child to himself and held a blaster to her head. He then dragged her towards his ship when suddenly Plo instinctively extended his right arm and released a barrage of lightning. He was well aware that Force Lightning was regarded as a dark side power and never really had any special interest or compulsions to experiment with the ability, but he always knew that it was an innate power that was within him. When he unleashed it on Dreed Pommel, Plo didn't let loose with his Force Lightning the way some undisciplined Force Sensitives might release their stress. Nor did he feel anger as he directed the lightning at Dreed's head. Neither did he feel fear for the child's safety. Plo Koon was calm, cool, and collected, and he was very in control. In control of his faculties the entire time, and merely acted to end the situation before any more innocent lives died. The first bolt knocked Dreed's arms from his body, releasing both the blaster and the child. His second bolt made certain the criminal remained unconscious. Plo was never tempted to deal a killing blow. The Jedi High Council asked him to contemplate whether he would ever use the power again, and after a long meditation, Plo Koon concluded it would be wrong of him to ignore this power that he might develop it into a useful technique for combat. And so, Plo Koon continued to be the Jedi who used Force Lightning. Though, as this was conjured from the will of the Force and not the dark side, the technique was named Electric Judgment. And it was yellow. Number six, his niece fought Darth Vader. In Legends, Sha Koon, Plo Koon's niece, survived Order 66, but sensed and saw what Anakin Skywalker did and what he had become. 
She hid a while on Coruscant before revealing herself to lure the by then cybernetic Darth Vader into a trap. Eventually, after juggernauting his way through several of her traps, Vader engaged Shakun in single combat. Blow's niece was initially able to outmaneuver the Sith Lord through her sheer speed and agility, scoring some hits on him. But then Vader brought his superior force power and strength to bear on her and, well, she was slain. But as she died, Shah experienced a vision of Vader's redemption, Palpatine's death, and the restoration of the Jedi Order through Vader's children. Number 7. Plo Koon was a master of the same lightsaber technique as Anakin Skywalker. Hailed from a long Keldor Jedi dynasty, Plo Koon was celebrated as a skilled and adept warrior who fought in many battles throughout his career. He studied as a Jedi Guardian, taking missions that would usually require him to demonstrate his lightsaber skills, rather than his diplomatic ones. Jedi Guardians tended to favor Form 5, Xian Dem So, for their lightsaber style. So did Plo Koon, and soon became a master of the technique, just like Anakin Skywalker. Though along with sharpening his Jedi abilities, he would also return to his home world at some point to study the ways of his own species, local force sect, the Baron Do and soon earned a place in their order as well, in addition to still being with the Jedi. Number 8. Darth Maul considered Plo Koon to be one of the greatest Jedi warriors of his time. On one of the earliest times Darth Sidious took Darth Maul to observe the Jedi Temple, both Sith stood there for the better part of the day, disguised as tourists. While Sidious used the dark side to cloak them from the senses of the Jedi, he would then point out various faces of Jedi Knights that Maul should take note of. The Zabrak assassin was thrilled as he realized that he could stand in the presence of the Jedi while listening to his master whispering about their downfall without the light side protectors having any idea of the fate the Sith had in store for them. The Sith were under their noses and they didn't even realize it. Maul had recently fought a Twi'lek Jedi, who was not the first of the order the Sith had crossed lightsabers with, but one of the few. Too few for Maul. He was eager to test himself against more Jedi, he longed to face a truly great warrior, and he considered Mace Windu and Plo Koon to be true tests of his skill. I think that would have been a really cool fight if Mace fought Maul. Of course, I'm pretty sure Mace would win, but it still would have been a really good battle. What do you think? Maybe I should make a versus battle in a video. Number 9. He dueled with Asajj Ventress. Unfortunately for us Star Wars fans, Darth Maul never got his chance against the Keldor Jedi but another dark side acolyte who was strong enough in the force for Darth Sidious to consider her as a threat, Asajj Ventress did cross blades with Plo Koon, twice. Asajj was the most skilled opponent he had ever faced. The first time they clashed, they were clearly evenly matched. It was only the arrival of Kit Fisto that forced her to retreat by using the force to bring down an avalanche on the two Jedi Masters. But both Jedi created a force pocket that offered them and their Republic Strike Team protection from the crushing wall of the snow and ice above. In their second encounter, both warriors again engage in an evenly matched duel, where despite Plo having a broken arm, he put up a fierce resistance and even managed to disarm Ventress of one of her blades. Again, the dark side acolyte escaped when reinforcements arrived. Number 10. Plo Koon's Antiox Breathe Mask Like all members of Plo Koon's species, the Keldor Jedi wore his mask to survive in space and in oxygen-rich atmospheres. The mask utilized a mixture of helium and Doran gas, while at the same time lowering surrounding oxygen levels, so that Plo Koon was able to survive in habitats that were different from Doran, his home world's environment. Carbon dioxide, nitrogen, or any excessive oxygen could prove deadly for the Jedi Master. So, the mask protected him from these dangers. Additionally, because his people had to shout to be heard outside of Doran's atmosphere, the mask also amplified Plo Koon's voice, Vader style. The goggles were also part of the mask and provided Plo with eyesight outside the dark and dusty atmosphere of his native planet. In all the years Plo Koon spent away from Doran, he never grew tired of living among oxygen breathers, despite having to cope with the claustrophobic mask and strange face that it gave him. Instead, he was honored to do his duty as a Jedi, and follow the will of the Force. Hope you guys enjoyed these 10 facts about Plo Koon. Please let me know what other facts you'd like for me to cover of him, maybe top 10 powers that he may have, or something else, and I can definitely do that in a video, because I know he's got way more than 10 interesting facts. So, hope you enjoyed this one, leave a like if you did, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys. May the Force be with you, always.
Pulse.